Your child is not broken. I'm Nicolene Peck and I work with families all over the world with their parenting, their relationships, and helping them understand self-government and how that can help all of those things. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the broken epidemic and what we can do about it. The broken person epidemic is a real thing. And I think it's because people were wanting not to think they have to be perfect. Because perfectionism presents its own problems, right? We then can't handle when we make any mistakes. But I think the fact that everybody now is calling themselves broken, and we're looking at our children as sometimes broken, and our relationships as totally broken, actually, goes back to that perfectionism thing. We never really left it behind. So we're saying there's this perfect standard and I can't be there, so I must embrace that I'm broken. But what if you're not broken? What if that whole idea is based on a false premise that there's either perfect or broken? What if we're just people? Because I think that's really the important thing for us to recognize here. A person is on a journey. They're on a path. It's not I'm this fixed pillar of either a whole house or a broken house. No, my house is constantly being built as I go through my life. And so when we look at our children and they're struggling with things, let's try to very first say to ourselves, the child isn't broken. They might have had some hard knocks. They might have some things on their house that are starting to, you know, break down a little bit, but that doesn't mean that they're fully broken. So long as a person is a person, they have potential. And I know this because I have a long history of working with foster children. In fact, I did treatment care for troubled teens for a lot of years. They were all between the ages of 12 and 18. And if I would have thought of them as broken, I don't think I would have really been able to help them. I had to see their potential. I had to see their power. I had to see their opportunity to make change and so that I could help them step bit by bit, repair the house a little bit more, a little bit more. That's what it means to be a parent of a child who's struggling. So first thing we need to do is make sure that we don't think of them as broken, but then what do we do to help them? Well, let's talk about that. Years ago when I was working with troubled teens, I had to make sure that I said, stayed centered on truth and didn't get caught up in all the emotion of it all. This is a really important thing for helping our children who feel like they're broken and feel like there's no hope for themselves. There is always hope. And so we have to make sure that we don't take their emotions personally, because once we do that, we start stressing and worrying and trying to make them feel better. We can't make anyone feel better. We can only present connection, truth, skills, teaching, training. That's all we can do as a person on the outside of them. So let's keep that in mind. So don't take their emotions personally, even though we care very, very deeply, but don't allow yourself to stress because if you do, then you go into the wrong part of your brain. You start running away from problems or trying to fight problems and they don't get solved. So we've got to stay front part of the brain, our prefrontal cortex, so we can do active thinking to try to help that person. The other truth that I focused on was that I am not making perfect children. They don't exist. Does the child know? that a perfect child doesn't exist. I gotta make sure they know that too, right? So what am I making? I'm making joyful adults who know what their mission in life is and can't wait to fight for it and have solid relationships with God and family. That's who I told myself I was making in my home. So if I'm making a certain type of adult that is in the future somewhere, then I don't need to worry too much about some bump along the way. And that means that I can make sure that they don't worry as much about it either. Now there's a lot of social influences that are happening right now that are really making life heavy on our children. And I recognize that. This is a hard time to be a young person. There's a lot of mixed messaging that's out there and they don't know, can I believe mom and dad that it'll be okay? Because it seems like everything's falling apart. And mom and dad keep telling me, well, when I was a child, nobody did this kind of stuff. And that we didn't have these types of problems when I was a child. 
So then it seems like it must be worse than I even think it is because mom and dad don't even know how to help me through this, right? We've got to make sure they understand something about us, okay? If you're the same generation as me, then you're part of what Strauss and Howe in their book, The Fourth Turning, called the nomad generation. We are the generation of people that hook together the idealist prophet generation and the hero generation that's supposed to fight for what's good and right. We are the ones that say, listen, we've been down those bad roads. We changed our ways so there's better for you. So you know what? Sometimes we might need to tell our children, there's actually a lot of stuff I know about that you might not even realize. There's a lot of bad things that I've done in my past, but I've overcome those things. And so you can too. So don't worry about it. Having a problem is not always a moral issue. Although sometimes it can be, having a problem could just be a learning issue or a problem solving issue. So let's help with all of the areas while we're also bringing in some of those moral components, those virtues and values that are important to teach our children as well. But it shouldn't feel heavy. Our teaching should feel hopeful. We're gonna talk about how to help your child no matter the problem that they might be facing. But before we do that, click that subscribe button now. There's a lot of content on this channel about emotions, about family bonding and relationships that you're definitely not gonna want to miss. And click that notification bell too, because then when those important videos come, you'll make sure to get them. So no matter what the problem is, there are things that we can always do. What we need to remember is that oftentimes when a person is experiencing a difficulty, something that makes them feel like they're beaten down and they're broken, what they need more than anything is connection to people. So they might be saying, I need my phone, I need to talk to my friends. And where that's good, what they really need more than anything is to talk to somebody who will lead them in the right direction, somebody who truly cares. So if your child is struggling, then make sure that you reach out in a connective way to them where you say, listen, this is what I'm here for. I love you no matter what. It doesn't matter anything you could tell me right now. I'm ready and I'm here to help you through it. There is nothing that we can't do together. So make sure your child knows that's what you are all about and make that connection. It's also going to help you feel good about the situation too. If you are connecting with them, connection to other people ends up bringing us closer to a feeling of truth. And this is because there are little bits of goodness on the inside of each of us. And when those little bits connect is there's a spiritual connection that happens where we can see the potential and the beauty of that person. And sometimes they see their own potential through our eyes. Now, sometimes maybe they're perfectionistic. They feel like they're failing in everything. They feel like they don't have any potential left. And, and this could be because they're, you know, they're overwhelmed by all the things that they didn't do. Sometimes the word potential sets people off that feel like they're struggling. Sometimes it helps them and empowers them. So you might want to say something to your child, like, you know, I see a lot in you that you can do and there's a lot of potential and strength there. Do you want to talk about that potential and strength or is that not something that you'd like to discuss right now? Because sometimes they're not ready for that and that might take them to a lower place. It just depends how they process in their own heads. Most people, if they have healthy relationships with you, will have no problem listening to what they think you can do and you helping them empower forward by focusing on their potential. But if they've had some damaging relationships and there's some scars there, it could be that they're not quite ready for hearing what you think should happen with their lives. So then how do you help them? What do you do? I highly recommend setting up a regular meeting schedule with them at least once a week, but for a while, if they're really struggling, probably every day, even if you don't talk, just the fact that you schedule time for them in your day shows them how valuable they are to you and that you truly are there to help them no matter what. Share things with each other during these talks and make sure that they know there's not going to be any judgment no matter what they happen to share with you. I think it could be important for you also to express certain principles to them, such as like the principle of repentance. When you come clean about something, when you just say something and you're honest about what's really going on, then guess what? The problem becomes less. It becomes more manageable. This is a true thing that happens within our hearts and minds, especially if we're talking about it with somebody who loves us and understands or wants to understand. And we're doing it in a way that is non-emotional, non-stressful. So in a calm way, our children absolutely need to be able to tell us anything. And we need to be ready to receive that type of information from them. 
then it's easier for them to get through the hard things. After they get everything off their chest that they need to, you need to make a plan with them about what to do. In fact, before you even engage in the conversation with them, you might say, listen, the whole point of this is for me to help understand and to help you make a plan for what to do. Sometimes we get overwhelmed because we just don't know what to do next. And we can make plans for ourselves that we, so that we don't get stuck with that type of anxiety hanging over us. Children have anxiety. Adults have anxiety. Everyone has anxiety. But that doesn't mean we're broken. We need to remember that. That's just part of being a human. And so we all get to learn how to manage our anxiety, how to manage our stresses, our angers, our sadness, our confusion. And parents can do that. There are certain key skills that I teach that actually help people develop some of that anti-fragile quality so that they don't end up feeling as broken when the little things come along the way. These skills that I teach are called the four basic skills, and they're part of the teaching self-government parenting course. The four basic skills are how to follow instructions, accept no answers and criticism, accept consequences, and disagree appropriately. You might think, how in the world do skills like that help a person choose to be anti-fragile? Well, they do because there are steps in those skills like learning how to have a calm face, voice, and body, learning how to look at a person and connect with someone, learning how to drop the subject when you don't get your way or something doesn't go right for you so that you can move on and many, many more things that they learn in just these four basic skill sets. Teaching your children those skills proactively is also going to help stop them from feeling like they're broken when one anxiety comes or one bad moment happens. Our children need strengthening and we can strengthen them by teaching them the things that they need. We must stay consistent and not coddling to our children. Don't coddle. Be consistent. They need that. They need someone who will lead them and guide them, who will walk beside them as they are nurtured along their life path. Their house may get a few bumps and bruises along the way, but it can be built up nice and strong, in fact, even stronger after they go through some of these struggles and learn how to govern themselves better. If you've enjoyed this video, I know you'll love my next video, which is actually a full class related to self-government, and it touches very heavily on expectations and stresses, as well as connection with each other. So I highly recommend that you go next to the video, The Expectation Trap versus the Cycle for Success. I'll see you there.